Welcome to Surfaces and Splines, a series of SOLIDWORKS video tutorials presented by the Demonic Group. My name is Andrew Lowe. I'm an industrial designer with the Demonic Group. And in Surfaces and Splines, we'll be taking a look at the production tool-ready modeling of this work flashlight. In previous videos, we took a look at some of the spline tools and how we could create really clean curves to build our surfaces from. Now we're going to start taking a look at the actual surface tools themselves. But before we uh, do any surface modeling, we need to create a patch layout. This is going to be the framework that we use to build all of our surfaces from. We're going to take the large, complicated uh, shape of the surface and of the handle. Instead of trying to create it with one surface, we'll break it down into smaller four, five, and uh, three-sided surfaces. Those surfaces that are four-sided, well, they'll become boundary surfaces, like the main uh, shaft of the handle here, like some of these transitions that create the blended bottom as well as some of these surfaces along the top. We use the surface fill for this three-sided uh, patch here and this complicated five-sided patch where the handle blends in the trigger area. Surface fill can also come into handy where we have a dissimilar number of edges with very different shapes, like from this edge to these three edges. And surface fill can help us uh, create that patch. But before we create boundary or um, surface fills, we need to create a reference surface. The reference surface has two major functions. In a part where we have a parting line and we need to have draft, the reference surface will be created from that parting line with a draft angle, two degrees for the instance of this flashlight, and any surface that terminates at the parting line will be made tangent to this reference surface. This will ensure that the surface has two degrees or whatever the required draft is at that parting line. The second use of a reference surface is when mirroring one half of a symmetric part. Anything, instead of adding draft, we'll just extrude this straight out. Any surface that hits the mirror plane will be made tangent to this reference surface. That's to ensure that there's no spike or dip when we mirror the two halves of the model. I'm often asked, what's the difference between boundary surface and surface fill? Well, imagine the outline of the patch as a frame with a rectangular tarp stretched over. The tarp can be any shape and size, but it always has to start with four sides. In the example on the left, we have this tarp, and when we try and stretch it to fit this uh, perimeter, it gets bunched up in the corner here. These orange lines represent the flow of the surface, and we can see that they terminate here, and this is called a degenerate point. Degenerate points are uh, we try to avoid them whenever possible as they have problems with or cause problems with fillets, with shells, and with offsets. However, if we take in our uh, tarp and instead of trying to scrunch it in the, the frame, we just draped it over the top and then trimmed it to fit this profile, we see we have a much better flow, these orange lines. And we don't have that degenerate point in the corner. So when the surface is to be created is four-sided, boundary surface offers more control. We see in the example on the left that the flow of the surface follows the kind of the outline, the, the, the perimeter of the surface, whereas when the surface is to be two, three, or five-sided, we're using surface fill because it creates this larger patch and trims it back. Note that the flow of the surface is not dictated by the boundary in surface fill, where the flow of the surface is dictated in a boundary surface. When we do create our surfaces, we need to uh, use the analysis tools to make sure we have clean connections between the various patches in the model. Uh, this is the same principle we talked about with, with splines. If the two edges are not tangent to each other, we have a Z0 contact. If they are tangent, the radiuses are not equal, but the angle of the curves is equal at the junction. We can see this break. In, in the highlights of the part. Now if your part's very textured, if it doesn't have a cosmetic requirements, this could be a good enough connection. But if the part's going to be um, reflective or if it's a very large blend, we may want to aim for the C2 or curvature uh, transition where we see that the radius of this curve is equal at the junction. And we can evaluate that by seeing this nice smooth zebra stripe. We don't have this break in the, in the highlights that uh, the C1 connection has. We can also analyze surfaces with a curvature display. Here we see two surfaces coming together. In the C1, we see that there's three distinct radius, radius 1, radius 2, and radius 3. In a C2 connection, we see that there's the radius of this arc, 
in this green color, the radius of this arc in this blue color, and we actually see that the radius is changing. The color is not constant. It's a gradient across. And this is indicating that the radius of this transition is changing along its length. The radius is equal here and here as we see the green blend into the blue. So thanks for joining us today. Follow the Damani Group on LinkedIn for new videos. Thanks.